important Christian teaching. Let me start by saying that when Craig says that uh, the following view is a view of skeptics, that we don't have the originals, we have only copies, that thousands of copies have thousands and ten thousands of mistakes, when he calls that the view of skeptics, it's true, that is the view of skeptics, and it's the view of non-skeptics, it's the view of every scholar who works in this field, including Craig. Everybody agrees. We don't have the originals, we have thousands of copies, and the thousands of copies have tens, if not hundreds of thousands of differences among them. Are any of these differences important? Or are they all fluff? Did Jesus say, let the one who is without sin be the first to cast a stone at her? It's a wonderful and familiar saying of Jesus, but it's based on a scribal variation that is an error. It was not originally in the New Testament Gospels, as Craig has just told us. Did Jesus say, neither do I condemn you, go and sin no more? Well, does it matter with whether Jesus said it or not? Turns out, it's only in a textual variant. It was not in the original New Testament. Did Jesus say, go into all the world and preach the gospel to the whole creation? He who believes in me and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not will be condemned. It's found only in a textual variant. These are the signs that will accompany those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons, they will speak in new tongues, they will pick up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing it will not hurt them. They will lay their hands on the sick and they will recover. Does it matter if Jesus said it? It certainly matters to the Christian groups in the Appalachian Mountains who practice snake handling as part of their worship services. Did Jesus give the entire Lord's Prayer or just half of it, as in Luke? Does it matter? It depends on which manuscript you read. Or do other textual variants matter? Does it matter whether the doctrine of the Trinity is explicitly taught in the New Testament? The only verse that comes close to teaching it directly is 1 John chapter 5, verses 7 and 8. There are three that bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Spirit, and these three are one. Does it matter if that's in the New Testament? Does it matter whether the Gospel of John ever calls Jesus the unique God or not? It's based on a textual variant. Does it matter whether the Gospel of Luke teaches a doctrine of atonement or not? The view that Jesus died for the sake of others. It depends on a textual variant. Does it matter if Jesus was in such agony before his arrest that he sweat blood? It's found in only a single textual variant of the Gospel of Luke. Does it matter that entire words, lines, paragraphs, and pages were left out by some scribes? Does it matter that there are numerous places in the New Testament where scholars cannot decide what the original text said? Does it matter that there are some places where we will never know what the original author said? Does that matter or not? Many evangelical scholars claim that it doesn't matter. But I don't believe them because these scholars devote their lives to studying the Greek manuscripts. Why would they do that if it doesn't matter? Major evangelical seminaries raise hundreds of thousands of dollars for manuscript projects to study these manuscripts. Why would they do that if it doesn't matter? It does matter. Is the Bible a trustworthy, reliable guide? If so, what if we don't know what it originally said? For some people, these facts don't matter. And if you're one of them, well and good. But if you're someone for whom this does matter, then I would urge you to start reading and start thinking about the Gospels of the New Testament as critical scholars have described them. Dr. Evans, final question. I'd like to thank Craig uh, for this uh, lively debate uh, uh, and a very uh, interesting debate for me. I hope for you as well. And I'd like to thank the pastoral staff of First uh, Family Church for hosting it. I'd like to thank uh, all of you for being attentive and respectful uh, to someone who feels very much like he's been thrown into the lion's den. <laughs> no offense. <laughs> Our ultimate question comes down to whether the Gospels are reliable or not. My view is that the Gospels have mistakes, discrepancies, contradictions, factual errors,
textual alterations, additions, omissions, and corruptions in them. This is not a unique view of a particularly liberal professor who teaches at Chapel Hill. Uh, I know that I seem very liberal. When we were uh, talking about the format for this debate, I asked that I be given the podium on the left. This view that I am setting forth, though, is not the view of just a liberal professor. It is virtually the consensus view among critical scholars across the United States and Europe. If you don't believe me, let me tell you a few striking facts that I don't think Craig will deny. This view that the New Testament Gospels contain discrepancies and errors is the view shared by the New Testament scholars who teach at all the major universities of this country. It is the view that is taught of every New Testament scholar who teaches at Ivy League schools, Harvard, Princeton, Yale, Brown, Columbia, Cornell, University of Pennsylvania. I know these people. It is the view of professors of New Testament at all the major state universities in this country. Where I live in the East, the University of Florida, Florida State, University of Georgia, all 14 of the universities in my state, North Carolina, University of Virginia, University of Maryland, Rutgers University. It's the view of every New Testament scholar who teaches at major universities in the Midwest, where you live, at the University of Texas, the University of Oklahoma, the University of Kansas, the University of Nebraska, the University of Iowa, and so on. It is a view of professors at New Testament, of New Testament in every major divinity school connected with a great university in this country. Harvard, Yale, Duke, Vanderbilt, Emory, University of Chicago, as well as the mainline seminaries not connected with the university. Princeton Theological Seminary, Claremont, the Graduate Theological Union, and on and on and on. These are not my idiosyncratic views. These views are taught at virtually every institution of higher learning in the entire world that is not fundamentalist or evangelical Christian. Most of these people teaching these views are themselves Christian. But they don't have an evangelical assumption that the Bible is without mistake. The only ones who say otherwise are fundamentalists or conservative evangelical Christians. How can that be? Is everyone else, apart from evangelicals, not as intelligent? Are they blind? Are they demonically inspired? Everyone else? How is it that the only ones who think differently, the only ones who think that the Bible is completely reliable, are people who have a particular theological point of view that affirms that the Bible does not have mistakes in it? This is a theological view, not a historical view. And people are, of course, welcome to have it. But the people who have it should admit that when they say the Bible is reliable, they are saying so not on historical grounds for historical reasons. They are saying so because their theological views require them to say it. If they did not have these theological views, they would agree with everyone else, Christian and non-Christian, that the Bible does not provide a reliable account of the historical Jesus and of the history of the early Christian church. Let me tell you why I think it matters. Many good Bible-believing Christians think that the Bible provides a blueprint for faith and ethics, for how you should believe, what you should believe, and how you should live. Questions over such things as abortion, gun control, gay rights, that the Bible provides us the blueprint. The problem is the Bible is not a single book. The Bible is a lot of books written by a lot of different authors who have a lot of different points of view that disagree with one another. This means that we should not be dogmatic about what we think and insist that what we think is what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches lots of different things. The Bible welcomes lots of different views, and we should too. I once thought that the Gospels were completely reliable. Now I no longer think so. It's not that I decided to jump on the scholarly bandwagon and abandon my evangelical faith. I looked long and hard at the evidence. I studied it for years. I grappled with it. I prayed over it. I talked it over with friends and loved ones. And eventually I came to see the truth. The Bible does not provide a reliable account of the things Jesus said and did. 
I know most of you will not change your mind. But I hope you realize that people like me come to this question honestly and openly. Not trying to destroy the faith of others, but simply searching for the truth. I hope you too will be honest and open and not be afraid to go wherever the truth seems to lead. Thank you very much.